Hello and welcome back to Mine Connolly's Bison Time. We're here in the Garden of the Eagle and keep those names coming in in the comment section for a name for this garden because we are going to put a waystone here. Last episode we got the Nether Mine built and it looks really cool, but between now and then, I've gone around and got those buildings along the Docklands up to level 3. So take a look. As we swoop by here you can see the Dyer's Hut, the Siege Works, the Nether Mine and the Warehouse, but also the Concrete Mixer's Hut are now level 3. And there we go, there's the builder still completing the job there. But the area looks really cool. We also splashed around some mahogany trees because you know what, they really help bring the area up. But that's not the only thing we've upgraded, so the Droman warship is now finally level 2. Now it doesn't really change on the outside, but when we go into the middle, into the inside of the boat, oh yeah, take a look at this. There are 10 guard towers down here, and these guard towers are mostly archers because I feel like we need a few more of those in the colony. We've already got a few druids and we've got plenty of knights. But the final thing that was holding us back was the graveyard. We had to get this from level 1 up to level 2 and then finally all the way up to level 3 because it was holding back some of the graveyard based research. Well okay there we go, that's quite the array of upgrades. Now I'm going to go over and take a look at the internals of these buildings because I bet they look really cool. All right, all right, let's find a way out of the garden, this nice little path. Oh man, I love how everything matches up and you can basically walk across all the paths. The area is all decorated. Oh man, the colony has really come together. And to look back at the very early days, some of the footage from just this area with nothing in it, who would have thought it would become this amazing, massive, sprawling Byzantinian city? So we're going to start on the left and here is the level 3 concrete mixer. Now the concrete mixer doesn't do anything extra or special at level 3. I think they're really just quicker at their job. But now it's got a bunch of brown and cream bricks. It looks a lot nicer. And then coming over here to the warehouse. Now I mentioned before that the nether miner was part of an avenue and we've got to kind of decorate this area here so the warehouse and the avenue kind of match up. And what we'll do is we'll probably just get some of these granite stairs and replace the edge blocks here with granite stairs. I think that'll look pretty cool. But yeah, the warehouse has loads more room in here now. Look at all these racks. Oh, sprawling. And some of them have slowly begun to fill up. Oh, look at this. Looks like we've got our first spoils from the nether. Then over here we have the dyer's hut up to level 3 and this was huge. This basically let us put almost every single dye recipe in here. We're at 50 of 80 recipes at the moment and yeah, oh my god, basically all of the wool colours, all of the different dyes, all of the stained glass colours are in here now. And that's progress baby. So now let's check out the nether mine. Now not much changes down here because basically this area here is underneath the avenue. So it's basically, yeah, just an avenue. But, ooh, as we go down here, you can see some warped high fey walls from the nether. Very nice. Ooh, and check this out. Some light red terracotta bricks. They look amazing. Some redstone walls and, oh my god! Oh no, watch out! It's Satan! <laughs> okay, yeah, so it looks like there's a bit of a demon going on here. I like this. I like this little kind of statue. It's little touches like this that show you that Byzantine has, like, a cut above the other style packs in terms of just decoration and attention to detail. Now the background to the mine has some warped high face stairs and logs and stuff as well, looking very cool. And the whole area has a little bit of a splash of quartz. So we're going to leave the nether mine to it. Oh wait, what's this? There's another... Oh! Oh man, whoa, there's... Oh, oh, it's another way down. But yeah, look at this. I didn't even see this before. It's like a, a workbench with a hoe. Why would a nether miner need a hoe? And you've seen inside of the warship, so let's go over there before night falls to check out the graveyard on the other end of the colony. Now we haven't had a raid for quite some time, so I'm worried, is tonight going to be a raid night? There is usually a way to tell. In fact, do I have any ancient tomes on me? No. So basically the ancient tomes that raiders drop sometimes will glow if there's going to be a raid on that night. So honestly, it's always good to carry an ancient tome around with you so you can just be sure that, hey, is there a raid tonight? Yes or no. 
So here we are, the graveyard, and oh man, what a massive glow up. These blue terracotta shingles as well look really, really impressive. I love that look. We are going to have to get this plumbed in because at the moment, this is kind of the back end of the colony that we haven't done anything with. And look at all this exposed dirt. It looks terrible. So we're going to come back here and probably put a wall over here to cap the area off. So what else is in the graveyard at level 3? Well, I think, yeah, it gets a bit of a catacombs. Let's check this out. Oh, yeah, look at this. So when our colonists do die, their graves should appear down here. Now, luckily, we haven't had anybody die. And the ones that did, well, the gravekeeper was a bit too slow. There you go. A very impressive looking build. It's kind of a shame that this is on the edge of the colony because this is really, really attractive and good to look at. So what are we doing this episode? Well, the reason why we actually built the Nethermine was to unlock the research so we could build the Alchemist's Hut. And the research is going to take quite some time. But let's take a look. There's probably some other things we can do as well now that the other buildings are higher level. So here it is. Magic Potions unlocks Alchemist. These Romans are crazy, are they indeed? Now, also, we're going to have to go and grab some nether wards. I don't think the nether miner has found any yet, and it's not too tricky to find in the nether. So that's a research we can do. I also want to do gaze into the pits. This will give us an expedition log for the nether mine, and I don't know what that means, but I want to see what it is. I'm very curious about that. And of course, in civilian, there is a plethora of graveyard research, all of these needing the graveyard to be level three. Aha, if we had two more minutes for the Gravekeeper to grab the grave, those other colonists' graves would not have expired. So, ooh, 64 rotten flesh though, I guess we're killing zombies. And whoa, look at this, oh yeah, Undertaker Emergency, the Undertaker unlocks Run ability, so he can run towards graves. That plus the decay is going to mean nobody ever dies forgotten. So we have a clear goal this episode, we need to grab the Ghast Tear, some Rotten Flesh, some Iron Boots, and of course 16 Nether Warts. So it does mean we're actually going to have to go back to the Nether, but that's okay. The question is though, where are we going to get the Rotten Flesh from? I'm going to have to go and kill zombies. Ugh. Now this ticker tape is because our builder is slowly building the basement, and that's going to be a real slow burn, so we'll see what that's doing later on. So here it is. This is the fortress. This is where we're going to find the nether warts. I've got an axe. I've got loads of food. This should not be a problem. So it's usually around here, right? There's usually like little kind of buildings that have nether warts inside. We'll keep going, keep looking until we find it. Now, actually, here's a question. If I kill a zombie pigman, will he drop rotten flesh? I've never thought about that. I've never really checked. So let's see if that is the case. Zombie Piglin, he dropped a gold nugget. It is risky because it makes all of them hate you, and there's usually a lot of these dudes, but oh my god. Oh, it's very risky. But you know what, I think I can handle this. Oh my god, why am I... Mark? Oh no, not Mark! Ah! Oh no. <laughs> I got backed into a dead end. So do you know what? Screw this. Why am I running around with, like, trash armor? But yeah, you know what? I feel like it's time for a bit of an armor upgrade. So I'm going to head home, make myself some diamond gear. We've got loads of diamonds now. There's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be decked in diamonds. Oh yeah, in fact, wow, I'm not wearing any armor at all. It looks like all of my armor has just been broken by all of the, the hits I've received. Well, yeah, so where are the diamonds? We know there's lo oh, there's none in my computer, but there are loads in the warehouse. So off to the warehouse. There we go, 115 diamonds. Let's see if we can find them. And here we go, 91 in here. That's great. A stack should do us just fine. Oh, looks like this bee is a bit stuck. Trying to get out to those flowers, bro. Tell you what, I'm going to help you out. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bee. Jesus, I tried to break the wood. I broke the bee. So here we are back at home. Now I'm going to get the diamonds. And what we're going to do is we're not just going to make diamond gear. We're going to make diamond silent gear. You basically make a diamond sword, put it back into the crafting bench, and it becomes a silent gear diamond sword that you can upgrade. And likewise, the same is possible with helmet, boots, legs, and chests. There we go. I think that's a fine use for the diamonds. Make these into silent gear versions. Oh, yeah, much, much easier than getting the templates. And now let's add some upgrades. So we want the tip upgrade first. Here we go. Now we can make a couple of tips. 
we want a tool rod upgrade because this is going to give us a better tool rod for our diamond sword. And next up we want coatings. I think you can put coatings on armor. So there we go, a diamond and an emerald, but you know what? Well worth it. There's also a lining that we can apply to our armor. That's going to be worth it too. We might need some more blueprints as well because we're also going to be making a grip. So we're going to make a phantom membrane grip. This gives it ancient too. Now we mix this with our sword and bam, it has a phantom membrane grip. So where are those blaze rods that I got last time? We'll have to get some more, but there's loads near to the portal. No, wait, we can't use blaze rods. Oh no, you don't need a blueprint with a blaze rod. You can just put it on the sword by default and bam, there we go. And that makes the final sword ancient too, so it gets you more XP dropped by mobs. Amazing. Malleable and flexible, so it's less likely to break and reach, which means we can reach further with it. Really cool. So now for the coating. What is coating used with? Aha, uh -huh, so there's a number of options with this. We can use netherite, prismarine, blaze gold, or gold. Yeah, wow, that's actually a downgrade, so gold coating on armor is not a good shout. But adding prismarine to this gives us a slightly better armor toughness and a bit more durability. And it also adds a little bit of knockback resistance. So those are all really cool things. So we're going to coat our entire armor with prismarine. Boom. So the final thing to consider is, do we want to enchant our gear? And the answer is, oh my god, of course we do. So we're going to want an enchanting table, pretty simple to build. There we go. And we're also going to want loads and loads of bookcases as well. And I feel like 20 is going to be plenty. Oh yeah, it rhymes. Now I feel like I want to put an enchanting bay somewhere in my house, so why not convert the shower into a makeshift enchanting shower? No, I don't know, there's not much room in here either for things like enchantment. No, do you know what? What's the point in a player house if you don't actually use the house? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a door right here. Oh wait, where's this? Oh cool, underground. And I'm going to build a little kind of enchantment pod. Ah, right, I had my night vision goggles on. That's why everything was so bright. Man, it was actually quite easy to see as well. I feel like I should probably keep those on 24-7. So yeah, let's put those back on in the curios. Oh yeah, nice and easy. Now I knew having all of this cobbled deep slate would come in handy one day. And it looks like that day has finally arrived loads of this stuff to make a perfect little enchanting pod. So if I remember rightly, the enchanting table goes in the middle and the bookcases go around the edge. We'll put that there and let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. And you know what? It's pretty primitive, but this will function as a little kind of loose enchanting zone. We're not looking for the best enchants, we're just looking to actually spend some of our XP because we keep losing this when we die and it's a massive waste. I might as well make the most of it. So projectile protection sounds pretty good to me. We'll get that on there. Even more projectile protection. Wow, nothing's gonna graze us. Nature's Mend or Mana Regen. Well, we'll go for Nature's Mend. And none of these are groundbreaking, but you know what, they're okay. And on the sword, we're just gonna put, at the moment, level one smite. So there we go, I'm not exactly an unkillable beast right now, but I am much more equipped to deal with stuff in the nether. We'll get rid of some of this junk. Oh yeah, looking like a, well, I don't really look like a badass. I look terrible, but you know what, that's fine. Cosmetically though, we can actually turn off some of this. And what I could actually do is turn off all my armor, so I'm wearing just my cool elf skin. Nice. Now, speaking of my elf skin, if you guys haven't checked it out already, make sure you do check out the new series, Dwarves vs Elves, I think we're calling it Blocks of Power. Anyway, it's multiplayer mine colonies where me and a couple of elves face off against three other dwarves and see who can build the best colony. But we're also using some magic mods and some kind of dwarvy steampunk mods as well. It's really fun, so do check it out. Anyway, we got the gear, let's go. Time for the nether. Uh-oh, watch out, it's Cheryl. Right, so we were killing these piglins to see if they drop rotten flesh. Oh my god, that's so much quicker, isn't it? Man, I'm so glad I upgraded my gear. These guys don't stand a chance. Boom, and they do drop rotten flesh, so we can go crazy on these fools. Plus, it's also pretty good XP. So let's keep going. We're going to try and find that fortress again and get back to looting. Oh, rude dudes. On my six. Get out of here, scum. 
Oh my god, it's just effortless now. These guys are nothing. Rose the AC Rizlord. Actually, do you know what? Let's put this armor and weapon to the test. Let's see if we can take out one of these bosses. We'll get him over here where we can fight him nice and easily. Okay, so we can do this. We're not doing loads of damage to him, but we are doing enough. We're slowly whittling this down. Oh yeah, but we got this. We definitely got this. Here we go, the last 20 health. Yeah, oh yeah, we're almost there. And, fingers crossed, this guy's gonna drop some amazing loot. He is wearing full diamond enchanted armor. So if he doesn't drop something amazing, I'm gonna be pretty, pretty peeved. Look at this. Oh yeah, he wasn't so strong. No, he wasn't. And he dropped Rose's ruined diamond cap of iron. So to compare this to what I've got... Oh man, this is way better, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is way better. I'm gonna slip that on. Amazing. All that work to enchant our gear, and the first boss we kill gives us way better stuff. But that's just, you know, loot progression in a nutshell. Another golden chest, come on. This has got to be the one. You're going to be the one. I know it. I can feel it. Yes. Oh my God. At last. Three more nether warts. 18. That's all we need. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of here, scum. So we're good to go. Now we've got what we need. I'm going to head home and get these researches underway. There we go. A pretty successful haul. It's night time though, so I'm going to have a quick sleep. But yeah, we've got loads of really cool loot from the nether there. Very good. We've got loads of achievements. Oh my god. Insane amount of achievements and an insane amount of XP as well. We're up to 31 again. Great stuff. So into the computer with this. I left a lot of loot behind and I do apologize. I know there's people at home. Oh my god. A huge horde of raiders is coming from the southwest. Whereabouts is that? Never eat shredded wheat. Down here. So they're coming from over here. Well, time to go to the military district to load up the spies. Hire the spies, boom, five gold, a bargain. Now, southwest, what is the closest waypoint down here? Oh, it's going to be Byzantine Hills, of course. So, Byzantine Hills, do we see them on the map yet? Whereabouts are they? Oh my god, they're there, and they're running away. Oh my god, look at those massive cowards. So here we go, we're up on the walls now. Wait, hang on a sec, they've, they've broken through already? No, I think they found a shortcut around the side of the walls. Oh, and the guards are hitting them thick and fast already. Combat is underway. Oh, no, I want to stay out of this. Don't chase me, chase the guards. So we've got our first dude. I'm going to take off my night vision goggles though, because it's making it a bit hard to see. Or, well, maybe a bit too easy to see, I don't know. Oh my god, this is chaos. Look at this. This is a real melee. Watch out there, oh my god, Decoy the Quick is running home through the battle, no! Why does the Dyer live all the way over here? Well, you fool, I hope you don't die. Okay, so, so far so good. It looks like the guards that are fleeing and running away are managing to get away without dying, so it's going pretty, uh, ow! Going pretty okay so far. Oh my god, though, this is, this combat is insane! There's a lot of barbarians, oh no! Oh no, Sal Caledonia was sliced and diced. Sal Caledonia, well, he was an archer, so it makes sense. Why was he in melee range? Ooh. Now we need more guards over here pronto. Where are the guards at? Combat is still happening thick and fast, though. And so far, only one casualty is a really good position to be in. The druids are throwing magical potions, keeping our guys healed and buffed. Really cool to see them in action. Five raiders left. Great. Yeah, that is great. Four raiders left. There's a raider. Go on, get him, guys. Get him. Get that guy. Are they going to mob him? Yeah. Oh, he's going down, isn't he? Look at this. Oh, like ants swarming a, an ice cream cone that you've dropped in the hot summer sun. He is ripperoni and pepperoni toast. That must be the war chief. All right, the last two are over here. Here we go. Yeah, that's right. Take him down, boys. One more to go, and it's that guy over there. He's running away. He's hiding. Who's going to get the killing blow, though? That's the question. 
It's random nerd, cheesy Braven. Who's it gonna be? Oh, they got him. They got him. They killed him. He's dead. Is he dead? Where is he? Oh, he's over there. Oh, it's Mix the Piznut. He's the real hero here. Oh, there we go. Amazing. Man, what a really successful repel of raiders. Now, there's a gravestone here for, I guess... Who was this? Sal Caledonia, right. So what we need to do now is wait for the graveyard keeper to come over here. It's the other end of the colony, so it might take him some time. But he's only got one grave to do, so I think he'll do it quite quickly. We're going to watch him dig this grave up and put it down in the graveyard. So here he comes, Uncle Guy, man on a mission. No time to waste. He's taking the, the, the viaduct via the rails, speeding along to gather that grave. Here we go. There he goes, digging up the grave. Very cool. Amazing, there we go. And now we'll head over to the graveyard and watch him put down the dude. Now he'll probably make it back to the graveyard before I do, because he can use rails. So the race is on, us versus Uncle Guy to the graveyard. Let's do it. Oh my God, he's quick, he's so quick. No, he's overtaken me. Oh my God. So it makes sense, rails really do speed up your colony. We're gonna need to put down loads more to speed up our dudes. Shortcut through the hospital, there we go. It's one thing we can do that the graveyard keeper cannot. So is he over here yet? Yeah, here he comes. And we did win the race, yeah. Suck on that, Uncle Guy. Now what's he gonna do with this corpse? He's, is he digging a grave here? Yeah, there we go. Oh, amazing. So, Sal Caldonia, Archer. A sad day indeed. And on that note, we're going to call it for this episode. So we went to the nether, we gathered a load of things that we need going forwards. We also upgraded our gear and our weapon so we can handle ourselves much, much better. I'm going to get the research underway so we unlock the Alchemist's Hut. Next episode, that means we can get started on that and see how potions work. But a massive thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.